Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Professor Xiangir, for the invitation to give us to give this lecture on preserving the DNS as a critical component. Uh, okay, I'll just uh, show you the video so at, at least you can see me. Um, so uh, my name is Paul Moshane. I am based in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm happy to be here uh, to talk about something that me and my colleague Yazid and also Fahad we are passionate about, and that is the DNS. And uh, I will just want to give uh, my colleagues an opportunity to introduce themselves. And uh, I'm based, I am actually work for the ICANN's Office of the CTO as the Technical Engagement Specialist for the Middle East and Africa. And uh, one of my roles is actually to talk about um, uh, the technical aspects and the underpinnings of DNS and also uh, outreach. And so during outreach, we uh, conduct trainings uh, to in, uh, in, in hand in hand with my colleagues. And uh, so uh, without much ado, I'll just call upon uh, uh, Yazid uh, to introduce himself. And then I will hand the session to Fahad to take us through uh, about, uh, to take us through the agenda and also about ICANN. So over to you, Yazid. Thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, hi, everyone, again. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to, to be with you uh, and deliver this, uh, this course. Uh, as usual, uh, technical engagement staff is uh, always welcome to, to share with, uh, with the audiences and uh, uh, specific here. Uh, University, which is a, a key uh, stakeholder for, for any question you, you may have, or I give any comment you uh, have to, to give. Uh, giving back the floor to Paul or to Far. Yeah, thanks, Yazid, and yeah, and thanks, Paul, and um, good morning, everybody. Uh, good night, um, um, Of course, um, so just uh, uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Fahad Batayne. I work for ICANN as a stakeholder engagement senior manager uh, covering the Middle East. I'm actually covering for my colleague uh, Seher uh, Sagiroglu, who you all know probably, um, as she's uh, she had to go on a leave. Um, uh, really happy to be with you. Uh, very happy to continue our engagement uh, with the Middle East Technical University. Um, I had the privilege actually to engage with uh, um, some parts of the university. And of course, I was also privileged to um, attend the campus, uh, sorry, to visit the campus in, in 2017. A very impressive uh, university, I have to admit. Um, I very much look forward to today's session. Um, I hope you all uh, benefit from it. Um, please feel free to ask. Um, any questions uh, you may have. Uh, Paul and Yazid are really uh, capable guys. They are the technical geeks, not me. I'm, I'm, I'm just an engagement person. Um, but um, I very much look forward uh, to the session with all of you. Um, and, and I guess uh, we can start actually. And uh, at any time, if you have any questions, just feel free to use the uh, facilities in Zoom where you can just raise your hand and, and shoot your question. Um, if you're a little bit on the shy end, uh, please feel free to write your questions in the chat pod um, and either Paul or Yazid uh, will be available to attend to it. Um, so uh, next slide, please. So here's the agenda for today. So we have a pretty uh, long uh, session, I think uh, almost three hours. Uh, so we'll start by talking a little bit about ICANN and what ICANN is. Uh, we'll then talk about the domain name system uh, as a critical infrastructure of the internet. Um, and you'll understand in a while why the DNS is considered a critical piece of the internet. Uh, we'll talk about DNS attacks. So as in any other uh, standard or technology on the internet, uh, the DNS is vulnerable uh, to attacks uh, for many reasons. Um, Paul and Yazid will be sharing that with you. We'll then, be talk with, we'll then talk about uh, securing the DNS infrastructure. Um, and this is a very important element uh, to ensure the security uh, stability and resiliency of the domain name system. Um, we'll talk then about some of the future work around the DNS. So uh, if you're into the IETF and uh, RFCs, uh, you've probably heard about uh, DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, 
um, GNS Quaid and some of the other privacy uh, standards that are uh, coming out. Uh, we'll then move into a slightly different topic, uh, but still uh, uh, revolving around uh, the DNS, uh, and that's uh, DNS abuse. Uh, DNS abuse is a very hot topic today at ICANN, and there's a lot of discussions and a lot of work happening uh, around it. And of course, with, with COVID-19 um, still living with us until today, uh, there has even been uh, more uh, abusive behavior. Um, and my colleagues will be sharing with you uh, some of the findings ICANN has uh, concluded. Um, and last but not least, they will be sharing with you some final remarks uh, around uh, the domain name system and around uh, today's lecture. So next slide, please. Uh, so we'll start by talking a little bit about ICANN. And um, um, at ICANN, we are really famous for acronyms. So maybe the first thing that we need to do is to understand what ICANN is. So ICANN stands for the Internet Corporation uh, for Assigned Names and Numbers. So you see the term internet, and then you see the terms names and numbers. When we talk about names, we talk about domain names. Uh, when we talk about numbers, uh, we talk about uh, IP addresses. And uh, the internet, of course, does need both to function. But of most importance, uh, the internet does need uh, IP addresses. Now, if we look at the technical infrastructure and the um, uh, under, uh, underlying pinnings of the internet, um, it actually understands IP addresses. Now, the internet at the lower levels or at the infrastructure level does not understand domain names. So the domain names and domain name system came at some upper levels, actually. And um, the reason why we use um, domain names is that we remember names easily. Uh, but we find it hard uh, to remember uh, IP addresses. Um, we all know that the Middle East Technical University has a website, which is metu.edu.tr, but I bet that we all don't know probably uh, what's the IP address of uh, uh, metu.edu.tr. Maybe above all, uh, we don't know maybe if it, has, if it uses IPv4 only, or whether it uses both IPv4 and IPv6. So this gives you some sort of an imagination of the importance of using domain names uh, and the domain name system uh, versus the IP addressing system that the internet um, understands. Next slide, please. Uh, now ICANN has a mission and uh, ICANN's mission is to ensure the stable and secure operation of the internet's unique identifier systems. So as you can see from the, uh, from the mission, we ensure the stability and security of the internet. Of course, not the entire internet because ICANN's mandate is really not the entire internet. ICANN's mandate is very, is very much limited uh, to unique identifiers. Now, when you hear the term unique identifiers, it actually means three things. It means domain names, it means IP addresses, and it means uh, protocols. So whether when you hear the term unique identifier systems, you must understand that it means three things, names, numbers, and uh, protocols. Now ICANN's mission is broken down into five components, actually, if you really kind of try to um, uh, expand on it further. Uh, I'm not gonna read each and every one of them, but I'll probably mention uh, key terms. So one term is uh, root zone. Now whether we talk about top level domains, or even if we talk about domain names themselves, they all operate in zone files. Uh, now, at the, top of, at the very top of the domain name system um, is something we call the root server system. And I think um, in the next slides, you will learn more about the root server system. Now, the root server system is a system that translates domain names into IP addresses. As I explained a while ago, uh, the internet only understands IP addresses, but we as human beings find it easier to remember names rather than remembering uh, numbers. Um, and that's where the, 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 the root server system comes into place. So it, it's, it's there to translate domain names into IP addresses. Now, the second thing we do is policies around generic top level domains. Now, there are different kinds of top level domains. So we have country code top level domains. One example is .tr. So .tr is a country code top level domain. It's specific to a country. The other type is called generic top level domains. 
So .com, for example, is a generic top-level domain or a GTLD. Uh, .net is a GTLD. Uh, .org uh, is a GTLD. So these are generic names that are not connected to a certain country or geography or even economy. They are generic. In other words, anybody from anywhere um, can, can register them. Now, ICANN does not interfere uh, or does not develop policies for country codes like .tr, uh, but it's involved in uh, policies related to generic uh, top-level domains. The third th item in our mission is the root service system, and I did explain a while ago uh, about the root service system. The fourth is um, internet uh, protocol numbers, which is IP addresses, and autonomous system numbers, which is AS numbers. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of what an AS number is, uh, but I'm not going to uh, dive into it. Uh, you may want to dig uh, online uh, just to maybe get a sense of what um, AS numbers or autonomous system numbers uh, are. Number five is that we collaborate with other bodies. Now, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, ICANN does not run the entire internet we coordinate the functions of a certain aspect of the internet, which is the unique identifiers. Now, the internet is much larger than just unique identifiers. Uh, you have the content side, uh, you have the governance side, um, you have uh, telecom, uh, and of course, today, telecom and the internet are very much interconnected. Uh, you have routing, you have um, RPKI, you have many other things that fall on the internet or, or, or are part of the internet. And in order for the internet to function properly, uh, we have to collaborate with all similar bodies uh, so that we ensure that our work is towards uh, the security and stability of the internet as a whole. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> now, the internet actually consists of two components. One is technical and the other is non-technical. Anything else, maybe business, maybe marketing, maybe governance, maybe legal, you just name it. So from a technical point of view, there are plenty of organizations that coordinate uh, the work of the internet. So you have ICANN, you have the Internet Society, you have the five regional internet registries that actually distribute um, IP addresses. Uh, you have the root system operators, um, you have the engin Internet Engineering Task Force, you have the World Wide Web, you have the IEEE, uh, you have internet service providers. So there are plenty of technical partners who make the internet work. And actually, if you take, if we, if we all take a step back, if, you, if we define the internet, the internet is a network of networks. So in other words, it consists of a number of, a large number of networks, almost 65,000 networks. So yes, if, if somebody asks you how many networks are there on the, on the internet, the answer is approximately 65,000. And actually this has to do uh, with the number of AS numbers that do exist on the internet. And I would really recommend that maybe after the lecture as a, an assignment, try to dig more about AS numbers. So it's autonomous system numbers. I'll probably write it in the chat pod uh, so that you all um, can really um, take some time uh, to maybe learn more about it. Uh, next slide, please. Now we have other non-technical partners. So not every, so the internet is not just technical uh, as in any, uh, let's say net, as in any, um, any, as in any other thing in life, um, things are, are not stuck just to one aspect. So for example, if you look at an ISP, an ISP is a business, it's a private company, uh, but at the same time, it's full of technical people uh, who are into uh, developing the technical infrastructure of the ISP. Same applies to the internet. Now the internet, its functionality is technical, but there are many other non-technical aspects um, that ensure that the internet is running uh, as we know it. Uh, some of the entities uh, that are into the uh, non-technical aspects of the internet uh, include, for example, Diplo Foundation. Um, so Diplo Foundation is a, uh, is a not-for-profit uh, that is into internet governance education. Uh, you have the World Intellectual Property Organization, and they are responsible for the intellectual property aspects uh, of the internet. You have, for example, the Inter uh, International Telecommunication Union, the ITU of the uh, uh, United Nations. 
Um, you have the OECD, for example. Uh, you even have ICANN, for example. So ICANN is not just technical. We do, do, uh, we do a lot of policy work. Uh, we do support uh, the governance aspects of the internet. Um, and so are other entities such as the Internet Society um, and maybe the regional internet registries. So keep in mind that the internet um, is technical uh, as an infrastructure, but when we talk about its governance, there are many other non-technical elements that actually contribute uh, to the proper functioning um, of the internet. Next slide, please. So that's it for me. Um, thank you for listening to me. I hope I didn't bore you. Uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me, either by raising your hand and taking the mic or maybe typing in the chat pod. Uh, but other than that, I'll be handing it over to my colleagues, both Paul and Yazid, uh, to drive you through the rest of uh, this very interesting lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farad. Uh, so, Yazid.